check out this new aerial photograph of Fisher 3's lava flow front. This is where that spreading and slowing is taking place on that flat saddle area. Capturing lava inside and building up this rather large pile that's then spreading out to the sides, right? So it's possible still that there's a more fluid core into that that could break out, but I think it's pretty protected from the margin. So we haven't seen any of that behavior, any of that kind of surging behavior on the flat at all. So that lava flow front has advanced about 10 miles. Now in this section, geologists observed several areas where lava overflowed from the channel. In one case, due to a channel blockage down slope. In this view of the channel, those large bumps are standing waves in the lava. Channel velocities are up to 26 to 36 feet per second. And take a look at this, a telephoto image of spatter being thrown from Fisher 3. It has sustained fountain heights of about 140 feet with burst reaching 230 feet. And the HVO is learning more about what kind of lava is emerging here. What can potentially happen with time is that the lava can become more crystalline and then that makes it more viscous. And so it's viscous and it's got a strength. So as it moves down the channel, it can actually couple with the channel walls and tear at them. So there's a lot more frictional resistance if this is a more viscous fluid going down that channel and a lot more chance of channel failure because of that. So right now we're still dealing with very fluid lava. It does get more viscous and more crystalline as it moves down the channel because it's cooling. But if it starts coming out of the vent and is more crystalline, then it'll be a lot more viscous as it right from the start. And if you like looking at lava images like this, we got something for you. Just head to your H&N digital platforms. We have hundreds of photos published right now that were submitted to us of this latest eruption. It's very cool stuff. Check it out. I'm Jonathan Jared Sapi reporting.